Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the world of Astaria, season two. We got greenlit for season two. Round of applause, just a short round of applause. <laughs> As always, I'm Tap Chandler off. Ringle, your DM, your master of the universe, your crazy guy with too much time on his hands, and uh, I am super happy to be back. Uh, we just have a few little bits of uh, you know, announcements before we get into it. Uh, but as always, welcome back on the ongoing D&D podcast here on the Gamehouse Twitch page and on the Cast Iron Comics YouTube page. And uh, our announcements, you know, as short as they'd be, we're going to start off with a bit of the upsetting one first. Uh, unfortunately, due to, or due to new uh, opportunities we can take advantage of, Andrew will no longer be joining us. Andrew was playing Aiden, and uh, just, to, just to make sure that it's all everything good he's always welcome back if he ever wants to and we wish him the best of luck uh, but with that uh, as one door closes a window opens i'd like to introduce our newest guest and newest player uh zach welcome to the stream super happy to have you man hello hello happy to be here and um as always nice to have you zach yep. as always we are joined by the uh the the Holy Trinity of the reoccurring cast members. We got Braxton, my old brother, is Aragon, the Stoic. But, uh, glad we got this uh, this whole top billing thing, yep, yep. you know, put together for season two. I'm <laughs> glad we were able to renegotiate that in the in the contract. Yep, don't worry. The addendum's been made. Uh, up next, we got uh, Marie as uh, gnome sorceress Mina, uh, little star child. <laughs> Last but, and last but certainly not least, we got Rob, as good old Revan, uh, fastest gunslinger in the campaign, only gunslinger in the campaign, but he's still pretty damn quick. Yeah. All right, Rob. There it is. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry there? about that. We're still, uh, the stream may be a bit upgraded, but we're still, you know, working and whatnot, but anyway, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the recap. Uh, the gist of season one, our players found themselves kind of voyaging to an undiscovered land where they would be tasked with helping build up a settlement. Unfortunately, when they got there, they had seen that is a horrible sight. No survivors except for one small, <coughs> one small kid, and throughout the nine months they spent there, uh, they were able to make contact with the natives of the island, uh, take down a various assortment of horrible beasts. The most threatening to them were somehow giant rats. Uh, and at the very end of it, they were visited by a, uh, a, another dragonborn, uh, saying he was from the uh, from the capital of Gilitra, the nation where the ship sailed from, and that they were all heading back to that nation to meet with the king himself. So, let's go ahead and get stuck in. Oh, okay, the players can be moving around. I just gotta move it to ship map. All right. Ooh. Back on the ship. Ah. Okay. Uh. So, okay, go find some. All right, here we go. So you guys can go ahead and place your characters, you know, right over here. Oh yeah, dragon guy. Forgot about this guy. Yep. I like so, his mustache. Uh, yeah, he's pretty have, solid. We have uh, we have uh, you know, the season one crew aboard the ship. The the uh, captain. Speak you guys up, falling in line a little bit. It's a very it's a very small ship. Now, like it's actually no, technically it's a normal <laughs> ship. I just didn't know how to build a fucking ship in the map picture. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> Thank you. Getting underway, uh, uh, Lord Nadar uh, ushers you off onto the boat. Uh, Ar Aragon, you kind of clumsily, you know, tossed this Izzy up there. And, uh, yeah, as you were all uh, stepping aboard, you were greeted by the new captain of this ship and uh, his first mate. Ah, yes, welcome back. I 
figured it'd be a quick trip, but uh, seems only a day at port. Excellent, excellent. Are we ready to start heading out soon? Oh, uh, yes, yes we are. These are the group of people I've come to pick up, and uh, we are ready to get underway. Is there, are you sure you're all ready? Is there nothing left back for you on the island to pick up? Uh, no, I don't think so. Drop off the cook. <laughs> hey, look, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't want to stay on the path. This was a horrible miscalculation on my part, but, <laughs> you know, free trip out of there. That sounds good to me. Alright then, well. I bet you would say that. So the captain kind of really let you two banter for a bit. Nice. Look at this first mate, so. Well, get the men ready, hoist the sails. That, we're gonna do just a little bit of time skip. Um, you guys, um, over the course of the first three weeks at sea, kind of make your way about the, uh, the ship, uh, the top deck, and now I reveal the next new deck, the middle floor, and then the kind of floor you guys would be staying on the third floor. Um, quite pretty possible. So, um, in those three weeks, is there anything particular you guys do on the ship, like, other than just? Any, any fishing, any, you know, sharpening your stuff, honing your skills? Um, um, I pretty much had to spend the last three weeks making sure my raptor doesn't just randomly attack the other people on the ship. <laughs> okay. uh, like, jump off. I, uh, I greatly, greatly underestimated, you know, the, <laughs> the stimulation he's getting from the environment. Yep. So, he, that's actually, that. He actually is a bit, is a bit antsy. So could you give me just like uh, one animal handling check with advantage since he does trust you a lot, but this is uh, a bit of sensory overload for him. I, I definitely don't know how what, like, uh, is that a cat? Do I, is that even a category for me? I think, yeah, everyone has animal handling. It's a d20 roll. Oh, okay, I see it, I see it. No, no, I see it. I see it now. To say that's how you got him in the first place. <laughs> All right, I don't need to go again. That's pretty good. No, okay. it is. I only, I only need one. So yeah, for the most part, uh, yeah, it's a bit, good. you know, he's, he's a bit skittish around, you know, the members of the crew. Uh, you keep him, you know, you know, you can keep him up top side as you can. He kind of, you know, stays in your room, kind of tucked in the corner. Um, he actually spends most of his time eating the rats that are on the ship. Uh, the captain even kind of like, at some point, just comes up to you and says like, "Hey, thanks for bringing this thing." We've, Totally clear of rats now. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Always okay, used. Always okay. used. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I just care. wait till this raptor gets to the city. <laughs> um, was there yeah. Else? Can't wait for that. Is there anything else anybody wants to necessarily do? Um, I have a question. Yes. Is there anybody on here who? Um, like, uses magic like any of the other people on the ship? Um, for the most part, no. This, these are just, you know, kind of, you know, toughened sailors. Uh, they're pretty much just standard, like, we don't know much, we just know how to, you know, sail a boat. Um, uh, the, the darn. One who would really know any they magic probably wouldn't appreciate my pranks. Probably not. I'd say the only one who would know magic, like, any at all, would be, like, the bartender. Um, but <laughs> Got it, got it. About that, uh, uh -oh. what about this, uh, summoning circle thing down here? Uh, yes, no, uh, yeah. That is, uh, that is Lord Madara's room. Um, that will come into play in a little bit. But, uh, for now, you don't really know about it in character. Like, Lord, Lord Nadar has been keeping himself in his room, uh, you know, kind of keeping busy with something important. Uh, but, uh, is that what Revan, like, is Revan just trying to, like, into his room at some point just to look at his stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Alright. Adley. So you uh you confront uh Lord Nadar about it and uh, how do you how do you go about it?
Oh, is she? He for? Oh, he's there Could you hear me? Uh, he yeah. Is was is he for sure? Is he in the room for sure? Yeah, he's he's in there. Okay, I'm gonna knock on the door. Okay. Yes, one moment. How, how can I help you? Yes, um, Lord Nader. Um, I would really like uh, to talk to you about something. Uh, that damn cook keeps harassing the rest of the crew, and I think uh, I think you should probably go check it out. Well, I appreciate the, the know-how, but I believe that the information best suited for the captain of the Ah, uh, but he doesn't give a shit about the captain. He's only going to listen to you. I, I think that you should. Uh, Definitely go go check it out. Um, you know, potentially tie him up or throw him off the boat, but you should definitely go check it out. That was strange. If it was only as that, I'm an old man. If you'd like me to have a talk with him, you may show me where he is. He's on. Uh, he's on the third deck. Um, but uh, my quarters are on this. Oh, excuse me. He's on the first deck, and. Uh, you know, my quarters are uh, next to his, and I think if he sees me, it's going to be a problem. So you should just go talk to him, and, and you know, I'll, I'll wait here for you, and you can just let me know. Oh. All right. The moment he pops in, you hear him grab Cramped something, boat. he comes, you know, back out, he kind of locks the door behind him, and he's like, pardon me? And, uh, I'm assuming you okay. do uh, um, an attempt at lock picking. I am, and I believe that is part of my stealth. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. So then, uh, I guess I'll just roll 1d20 plus 2? Mm -hmm. Or plus 4, sorry. Cool. That's why I wanted to give it a go. That's pretty that good. That's a level up. There it is. Nice, okay. nice, nice. Yeah, you Thank you, thank you. You get the lock undone, but Lord, like... He hears you kind of fiddling with the lock, but, you know, you've unlocked the door. Can hear me, you said? Yeah, he, he heard you kind of, like, fiddling with the lock. He, like, Just he making sure that it's, uh, safe for you there, Lord. I don't want to, don't want you to get hurt. Sorry about that. You go take care of, uh, Captain, uh, Cook Dipshit, so. Right, don't worry about it. So, yeah, you're I'm going to step into the room. Okay. So, uh, what okay. you see... I'm stealthing still. Right. Ooh. So, uh, give me a stealth Oh, is that 14? Got it. So 14 was for lock checking, but, uh... Well, I'll, I'll just chalk that up. We'll see if I knock shit over or not. Oh! Oh, dude, okay. there's no way. Oh, shit. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> You almost disappear from this campaign. You just kind of like you, no one even know if you're really here on the boat anymore. But uh, you you managed to get in there, and uh, you do see that there's like this kind of um, this teleportation circle kind of set up, you know, in his room. Uh, there's a few kind of like books, a few notes, just from the king. You assume uh, most of the important stuff is locked up in his chest. You gather after looking over his desk, but uh, yeah, um, I'd say it's a teleportation best... circle. Yeah, you, you you see the notes on the book, or the, the books on his desk with notes that say, you know, in, in case of expedited, you know, arrival, here's how to make a proper teleportation sigil. So, yeah. You, you and can I use, um, can I use my, I think it's my spell. Um, can I use my spell identify where, uh, if I touch the circle, I'll know everything about it pretty much? Um, yeah. Yeah, you can. I love identify. that spell. It's the most open <laughs> I, I have so many things in this campaign that identify just might completely fuck me on. Let's <laughs> identify. God. Okay. I would like to identify that and see, one spell. All right, so, see where it goes to. So, Revan, you, you go ahead and bend down. You put your hand on the circle, not to smudge it or anything. And you kind of, you learn that it is uh, linked uh, to another one. 
best guess would be back in the mainland. Um, yeah, it, it's it, what you're getting is it's going to teleport you to the one it's linked to. Mm. Okay. Um, can I go check out this chest and try to open it? Train is rolling. Anything, is there anything anybody else is doing while uh, Revan is uh, uh, damn picturing his way through uh, this man's stuff? <laughs> um, I'm probably somewhere making little versions of people dance on tabletops. You would be in the bar. I would say it's, uh, this area ah. Right. Did I open right. it? Um, yeah, and this time you don't make as much of the noise, plus, like, you have the fact that the door is closed and the door is focused on somebody else, so you open it. Um, it's mostly, you know, some, some important spell books. Uh, it's some, um, some books that are kind of like, that look very regal. Uh, perhaps some sort of, like, you know, a directive or a order from... It, it, to you, it looks like your best guess would be, like, a royal decree or something. I open that and read it. Um, okay, um, do you speak Draconic? Conic? Yeah, um... Draconic. Language of Dragons. Right. <laughs> um, where are my languages? Let's see. I swear, you speak Draconic too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a monster, man. I'm all over the place. Um, can anybody tell me on this where I can see my languages that I speak? It is uh, under uh, proficiencies. Yeah, language proficiencies. Bottom Shit, one. I, sp I speak five different fucking languages, and it's not one of them is not draconic. I speak elvish, common, dwarfish, orc, and goblin. Oh, Damn it. <laughs> I think you're the only <laughs> one of us who doesn't speak draconic. So, Alright, I'm taking that thing with me then. You're taking the royal decree. Okay, so you sort of like kind of roll it. Damn back right. Uh, the only thing you really recognize is what's the symbol of the Gilly Traw on it. You put it in your coat and you sort of like stuff it in. Is there anything, uh, anything else? I'm gonna sneak out and um, I'm gonna come out yelling at uh, Aiden and um, I'm gonna relock his. You know, I'm gonna close everything, make it all good. I'm gonna come out before they're out and be like, hey. Have you taken care of that stupid ass cook yet? Um, so, Riven, um, me and Aiden were discussing. He, he has no idea what you speak of. And Aiden just kind of like, Yeah, I haven't done shit this whole trip, man. I've just been hanging out in my room. Uh, I know. I just really wanted to screw with you. You know, we've been having this prank war going back and forth. I wink at him. I, I got you, but um, I've been meaning to talk to you about something important. So, uh, when you get a minute. Come, come see me. And he sort of like kind of... I'll... I'll... Oh. Go ahead, Rob. I was going to say, I can go now, if that's okay. Alright, yeah, yeah, come on. Let's, let's just like... I, I know this is going to sound weird, but just... Talk with me in my room. This is about something you and me both know about. Uh, Nadar, good talking to you, buddy. I, I look at Nadar and I say, if I don't come out of there in the next 15 minutes, send... Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> sort of just trudges back in. You were, uh, did you make sure to relock the chest and door? Uh, that's what I said. I said I relock and put everything back. Okay. So uh, we're gonna, we'll we'll touch on the conversation you and Aiden have. But um, Nina, you were uh, just in the bar. Ah, uh, sure. That's fine. This is uh, like you you kind of been making like little dancing uh, images of. Half-blind, half with man is just like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> hey, is he my friend? I mean, he's everyone. He's the he's the bartender. He's pretty, he's a friendly, friendly guy. He's also a half -blind. Like, hey. it's really hard to not be friends with him. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, at least I have one friend. I know that I annoy a lot of people, but. 
I like that we're friends. I appreciate that. I don't, I don't see how you could annoy anybody. You're so nice. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> This is like the day, like you guys are doing this all at the same time. And um, is anyone else like on the main deck? Back on the main deck? Yeah, we have Question mark. Um, <laughs> is that is that which one's main deck? The one that I'm currently on? Yeah, top. I, okay, top side, yeah. middle, and ground. Like, I'm gonna refer to these on the ground as my quotes. But uh, yeah, Rex, you're your top deck. You okay, so top. it's main deck, top side. Um, yeah, what's up? You say, uh, I'm not really up to much, like I said. I have to make sure this guy doesn't just, you know, SAB doesn't just uh, kill everyone on the main deck. I, gotcha. uh, I don't particularly like the look that Black Beerus in the top right corner is giving me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind letting him go, but... I mean, this guy's just kind of uh, manning. I know better. I really shouldn't let him loose because then that could be the end of it. Right. Yeah, everyone <laughs> on the boat's pretty much just, you know, manning the boats. Like, they're just driving, you know, manning the sails, uh, swabbing the decks. Like, yeah, the cat, like, the cat's not the only one giving you, like, this kind of, a, you know, look. Like, it's just, there's an intimidating giant dragon, and he has an even smaller, just an intimidating giant lizard. So everyone's just kind of, like, weary of like, uh, I'd say this would probably be the only guy who's hanging out near you. Like the, the, okay. the Triton or the Merfolk person. But um, give me a quick perception check. It'll do one for Mellow as well. Okay. Right, Mello, oh, God. Oh. I have no clue what's going on. Oh. I'm just busy with the Raptor. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mellow sort of just like kind of like kind of looks around like, is anyone here wing? Uh, suddenly, just kind of like slowly descending up onto the boat, uh, is this Aarakocra wig. And he just sort of like, you know, like cool. down. Oh. And uh, he says, uh, I'm uh, looking for. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, hi. Uh, you're the. You're the, um, the, the, the first mate, right? Hi. I'm looking for uh, the warden of dawn. Third. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, Aragon, you just see, like, this giant bird man. Huge wings just land on the deck and just kind of, like, make its way down the And, uh... And what just... the hell? Uh... <laughs> uh, we're in the middle of nowhere. Where did that guy come from? He had wings. <laughs> he just came down from the sky. That's a long way. He's a very from where? Bird. <laughs> God. I was gonna say, does anyone like want to take investigation into this, or just kind of like wait it out? I'm interested to see uh, just what happens. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're I'm gonna, gonna follow <laughs> him. All right. Bird guy goes to the direction to uh, talks to Nadar and pretty much just hands him his notes. Mina, since you're the only one able to like see it within eye shots, um, you have no reference what the note is to. You do recognize a kind of like royal symbol, but that's about it. And the bird sort of just starts walking back to the door, and he says, "Oh, hello there." Hi. Who, who, who are you? Oh, I'm um. What was his name? I'm I'm Peter. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, this. Oh. So what are you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm if that's not rude to ask. Oh, it's, it's fine. I, I get oh that's I, super cool. Yeah, I, I mean, um, uh, people ask about my blue skin all the time, so like I get it. I are you from? You know, I think I made a delivery to a town. And, you know, kind of just take it. Are you from um, Soul Fang? Give me a quick intelligence roll with super advantage. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
mind. I so, remember everything. Yeah, he, he pretty much just asks you your home country, which is uh, so. Or, yeah, I think I'm saying it right. So pain. Um, it's pretty much just the nation northeast of Gilitra, and you, your hometown is just you know near the border of it. And he pretty much just asks you, "Are you from that town with gnomes that are, that are all sorts of fun colors?" Yes, actually, we're we're we just all have crazy color skin. It's fun. It makes no, it makes everything so much more colorful. I know. It was, it was, I'm not gonna lie. It was it's fun. fun. We like to have fun here. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the birds just like yeah. I, it was quite a trip. The first time I made a few deliveries there. I, you. I don't know about you. You look very familiar, but I can't tell you. But it's it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss. He's asking your name as well. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, I said Mina. Oh, sorry. I, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mina. He kind of like oh, grips sorry. Your, this is alright. He grips your kind of like small gnomish hands with like these kind of like a cross between a normal hand and bird talons. They don't really hurt, but they're like kind of just weird feeling. And he's like, well, if you, if you don't mind uh, me, I'm, I'm going to go head to the, the, the small on deck tavern. It's a long flight, man. Boy, oh boy, my wings are tired. Absolutely. Would you like to come with? See ya. Oh. Sure. Okay. I'm already friends with the bartender, so that works out. Oh, me too. I tend to make a lot of deliveries for the ship. Like, this is one of the more reoccurring shifts in the, in the naval fleet. He pretty much just, you know, you just sort of, you know, kick back, have a, have a drink, and shoot the, shoot the shit about, you know, his stuff. He's, uh, he's pretty much just a mail courier. He's one of the better ones in the Gilly Tribe. He's very strong. That's why he was able to fly all the way out here. And, uh, with that... We're gonna go ahead. Fuck the bird here. How do they even address that? Ship in ocean? Does it just land on a random ship? Like... <laughs> hey man, the mail's gotta get out somehow. Oh, clearly. Who better deal with people that can actually just fly naturally? <laughs> Oh my god, that was That's, great. That logic is airtight. <laughs> in, a, in a world of fantasy and bullshit like this, you're gonna question like, oh, this bird can't fly for that long of a time, even though he's strong or good at his job. That is yeah. exactly what he's rushing <laughs> He has, he, has, he has a few like his magical tricks to help him with his travels, especially out at sea. But, but yeah, for the most part, he just presents himself as like yeah, I'm very efficient. So uh, quickly to touch Thank upon uh, conversation, Aiden is having with Revan. Um, Aiden's talking to you about like the, the crystal or the uh, some kind of gems you guys wear. Like you wear the uh, the orange citrine on your waist. He wears the kind of blue sapphire on his neck. He's just sort of like. Yeah, man, this is, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this stuff no more. Like, they don't seem aggressive enough, but I just, I don't know. How, how are you and yours getting along? I don't know, I always tell it to go fuck itself, so. I mean, I hadn't thought of that, but mine's like, mine's like a, like a friendly lady with a pretty voice, but, like, I, I, I guess yours isn't, so you're a bit more standoffish. Oh, I just don't want to take it shit, so I don't. For the most part, I don't think they're really, like, mine, because, I'll, I'll tell you what mine does for me, um, it allows me to do quite a lot of things about water, I can, I can breathe in water, I can go really fast in water, uh, I've been able to improve my swordsmanship, I don't know how, this thing just made me kind of more dexterous with a sword, but, uh, it's, I, it has its uses if you, if you let it help you, but I just, over those few months of us just doing work at the camp, I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah, you, mine doesn't do anything like that. Are, are you sure? Because I feel like it does something, mister. I was able to knock a guy flat on his ass. I mean, uh, you know, I can do stuff, but, uh, I don't know that I want to tell you right now exactly what that is. I want to wait to see uh, what these little guys do, and just in case. Not because I don't trust you, because surprisingly, in this situation, I actually do. But uh, 
you know, our, our, our little gems can talk to people and, uh, you know, I don't want them to, like, take over our brains or something and, you know, I get that, but piss I over, so. Like, has yours, has yours talked at all about, like, the one I got? Like, mine keeps saying it wants to be with its brother, and I don't know what that means. Um, mine just thinks that, mine just thinks that yours is hot. That's all. Nice. There. Like okay, that's weird, but, I mean, he's thrown, I guess. Now he's looking Again, at that's just what it's told me. He holds the pen and just kind of looks at it like, ugh. But, um, yeah, you guys sort of just talk shop <laughs> about, like, the gems. And, um, if you all could move down to the third floor, because later, the, uh, later in the day, the guard does kind of, like, gather you guys up. It's like, please, uh, meet, meet me down here, my friend. The fucker. Trying to tell me where to go. So, where to go? <laughs> Gather down on the third floor of it, and uh, he pretty much tells you that like, uh, he's going there for the Ah. Uh. Alright. <laughs> I was hiding. I was hiding. Alright, so, um, the Nar pretty much tells you the reason, the, the reason why there was the, the delivery guy. Uh, so it's like, well, it seems that our presence has been rather requested urgent. Spending the past few days t uh, setting up a teleportation system here. Now, you all have what you need on you. Don't say. Beg pardon? That's in Keep going. Right. Uh, pretty much, if you all have what you need on you, I, I would very much uh, urgently ask, ask you all to join me when so we can expedite our journey. Bring the bird guy. Oh no, he's he does this stuff all the time. He just hangs out on the ship until he's ready to go. I know, but I, I I think he would be fun to have around. Can we bring him? Uh, he does have an already destined route to me, uh, but I'm I'm sure once you get to the city and settled in, you may request his services from the District Zero City Center. Any other, any yeah, let's do it. Alright. If you all are ready with your items, you may follow me. And he kind of unlocks his room, opens the door, and just kind of like gestures you all to like, fit in. And since it's not going to actually fit, we all won't have to go in there because now he teleports as he kind of like activates the sigil. Uh, whirling magical mystical lights go forth, and you guys. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like a feeling of just being incredibly light. Teleporting off to the dead Yep. He teleports into an extremely beautiful, uh, well well kept manor at night. Ooh. There's okay. Maps already. Okay. Uh, you are all gonna be. I mean, you don't have to put your character on this screen yet. You're all just kind of like inside of a manor, and uh, as the as you all step out of the teleportation. He pretty much just like kind of cracks his knuckles like, oh, oh man, oh that takes a lot out of me. Well, welcome all to my home. I hope it's accommodating for you all. Uh, feel free to make yourselves rested and as comfortable as possible. Uh, we wake up in the morning and we shall set out uh, to get you all cleaned up and ready for the day. And once again, we have a little bit of a chiller moment. Got a lot going on, and I had my reasons, but I figured I'd take this time to apologize if, if you all 
Alright, good. Oh, thanks. No, no. Yeah, it's all good. I, um, also, I wanted to give you this. And she takes out a little bit of, like, folded parchment paper. And she says, she's like, now, you don't read it now. Read it about maybe tomorrow night. I have a, I'm a bit superstitious, so just hold on to this and read it tomorrow. And it'll pretty much, you know, it'll, it'll explain any questions that you may have afterwards. It'll be just a, a flash of light. Uh, sure. That's fine. Okay. And could you do me a favor as well? Huh? When, whatever happens going on, whatever journey we go on, try and be careful. Oh, yeah, sure, I can do that. And uh, with that, she sort of just like kind of, um, just, I mean, she's crouched down at the moment since she's on your level talking. She's just sort of like, you know, gives you kind of like a friendly pat <laughs> and leaves the room. And with that, okay. it's, 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 it's <laughs> You guys are in like um like any of you who looked out the window or anything like this kind of looking around it's a beautiful house like a really nice manor you look outside it's like kind of a fenced community uh, more kind of beautiful houses built in a similar style there's a uh, staff who are willing to like you know help you out with anything like they show you to rooms uh there's a prepared meal like you all actually get a really well cooked meal and aiden's just sort of like it's a stuff. I'm gonna have to write some of the recipes down. He's just sort of like kind of, you know, going nuts in the kitchen, just like looking at all the ingredients and whatnot. And, um, yeah, do you guys do anything before you head off to sleep? <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. You all sort of, um, you all head off to sleep. Aragon, the, the, the staff kind of asked you to take SAB out to the backyard just to, like, you know, <laughs> they, they don't, Lord Nadar doesn't really care for animals in the house, um, and the staff try to enforce this rule. Uh, I'm gonna fuck him. Sometimes. Okay. Where are you gonna take this fucker? Um, it, it's a it's a fenced in backyard, so he'll just you know it's it's like he's an outdoor dog. You just put him out there, and he'll hang out. The staff will bring him some food. And make sure he doesn't attack any of them. <laughs> that, you guys all wake up, and uh, pretty much, you know, you're all fully rested, and as, of course, you're all fully healed, you're all, you know, you're all good. And you all kind of meet back down in the, uh, in the room, uh, Lord Nadar is pretty much sitting at his table, there's breakfast prepared, like, you guys are finally getting some really good, consistent meals, and he pretty much is like, you know, yes, uh, a carriage will be coming for you all today, uh, it'll be taking you to a spa, I have booked for you, so you can get cleaned up for the meeting. If there's any particular breakfast foods or drinks you prefer, just tell me the staff and I will go fetch the carriage. Uh, can you tell us who we're going to be meeting? Oh, yes. Uh, my apologies. That almost slipped my mind. You will be meeting with King Leondris, ruler of Gilead. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I'm sure the uh, Captain Cordron fellow who is running the settlement told you that there was a, an alternative uh, motive for the settlement. It was to find a group of people who are strong and strapping and clever enough to uh, aid in a sort of mission the king has been uh, very much concerned about. I don't know if we're <laughs> clever enough for that, but uh, well, yeah, I do miss that captain. He's a good man. Oh, I miss him. Your mission will take you back there. Perhaps not, but you are not bound by any real code or anything. You are free to travel uh, in between uh, missions as much as you like. If you have want to travel back to Shakar, you are more than welcome to, as long as the king is made aware. Now then. Interesting. Alright. I have a carriage to Brokio. You may all. And, uh, can I get just a, a perception check from everybody? This guy's bad news. He's been just completely friendly to you guys the whole time. Am I trying to perceive? <laughs> mm. 
apparently nothing. <laughs> so the, the perception limit I was putting it was a five, because it's a very obvious thing. Um, Mello's gone. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, no. oh no. Please don't go. And Aiden is just. <laughs> Aiden is still in the kitchen, he just kind of comes out as you guys kind of have this realization like, oh, let's pull the long faces. Nice. Remember that person that was with us today and almost died? She's gone. <laughs> I feel like that was the most of oh, you mean the other elf? Yeah. Yeah, she's gone. Forever. Probably. My Maybe only come female back and friend. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Well, maybe you'll make some more for me, uh, uh, female friend. Sorry, it's early. I haven't had coffee yet. My tongue is <laughs> uh, That's how you normally talk. Fuck you. <laughs> and with that, um, <laughs> you guys eat breakfast, you have your coffees, and you are then carted off to a kind of like, uh, it's, it's a magnificent looking carriage driven by just kind of like, you know, a normal human male. Uh, nice uh, the horses are like these beautiful Clydesdales that just kind of pull you through the city. Uh, the reason why it's Clydesdales is because you have a very large dragonborn with you and the other horses aren't strong enough to pull the carriage. So, you all can now move down to the bottom of the screen and in front of the two uh, character cards you may place your characters as you kind of get out at a very, very luxurious looking spa. I'm on the wrong side. No, 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 over here, guys. Just down here. <laughs> I was right! Well, I didn't know. Ha. Ah. Alright. So, you all there kind of walk in. Um, SAB is kind of like, you know, uh, the, the, the staff assured you, Aragon, that SAB is going to be okay. He's just going to stay at the manor for a few minutes and that they will bring him uh, when Looking better. the meeting is <laughs> So, you all kind of, you know, you walk in and the, the two uh, women behind the counter attending the establishment is like, Ah, oh, yes, welcome, welcome! You must be the, uh, the folks Lord Nagar booked the spa up for. Welcome. Uh, we are here to, uh, make sure your experience is well. Uh, men, you may head off to the, the left, and then Miss, you may head off to the right, the, the locker room to just change and enjoy your, your time here. Uh, once you're done soaking in the spa, uh, there's a little lounge right behind it that you may all sit Why not for a long bit? Well, we were informed that you were on a bit of a tight schedule, but you are here to relax as long as you need. We'll be sure to get you a new time if the Lord sees fit. Perfect. Uh, okay. So, is this the, 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 like... Yeah, that is the, uh, you know, changing rooms. Uh, at least the closest I could make to a changing room. You good? Honestly. Yeah. Uh, the, you guys are pretty much just walking around. You notice that, like, um, like the, the the building, while only two women are currently working, there's a lot of suits of armor, just sort of hanging out in all the rooms. Mm. Um, they pretty much just say. Hey, like, I'm just gonna. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I, I'm gonna uh take. You know, get get into the hot tub, but with my gun next to me. <laughs> okay. um, really, your gun? I mean, yep. that's what I call it. Yep. That's not code for anything. <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> Aragon classic. <laughs> but you, uh, you know, it's you guys one. are hanging it's out in this one. like kind of large, kind of like you know, bathhouse esque type spa thing. Mina, you are. Um, Fortunately, to say it, you're sat alone. But uh, it, you, you all feel like really nice and relaxed. Like this is a pampering you have not been accustomed to, almost ever. Like this is the royal treatment you've been. Oh, what's the ice? Quick. Okay, I'm singing then. <laughs> all right, give me. Mina is just happily singing. Give me a <laughs> Check. You asking me to do okay? Yeah. I want to see how good you can sing. Oh. 
Yo. Sorry, did not code for anything. <laughs> yeah, Steve. It's it's a it's a pretty good tune. You're just singing to yourself. You're splashing about in the pool. <laughs> I mean, it's a spa pool, but it's like a normal pool. Uh, the guys are just sort of yeah. hanging out awkwardly. Air gun's taking up a lot of room, but the other two are like opposite opposite ends of the room. <laughs> Uh, Two guys. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of spilling over when I sit down. Peter Parker's yeah. in that day. <laughs> just three, no, it's just three guys. <laughs> just three oh, guys man. chilling at the hot club. And um, we're gonna go ahead and um, skip the fuck piece here. You guys get you get cleaned up, smelling great, feeling great. Uh, Aragon, they gave you like cucumber thing for your eyes, but you just ate those because you thought, oh, it's a cucumber. Of course I did. <laughs> and uh, you guys. <laughs> Uh, you guys are then greeted by the same carriage that carts you back uh, through the town, this time to a much smaller district, but far grander, far, uh, far spacious for all the manners. You are carted to the capital of the city where the castle sits, for the king himself. Oh, shit. Oh. And, uh, you know, you are you're escorted inside, and, uh, on, you know, just for the history's sake, uh, this is the castle right here uh there are three manors that are like you know just in the same area there's a some sort of like royal looking stable where the clydesdale cart is pulled once you all exit and enter into the castle guards everywhere these kind of like you know dudes decked out in like just you know, normal you know, chest plate armor helmet blue gear to kind of like sport the colors of the country and you all are directed inside to a war room and you may all place yourselves right in here and uh, just give me a quick perception roll as you enter in. Oh, I'm sure if Zach's character is the king. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you paid me 20 bucks to be king. God, what are these rolls? I mean, it's it, it's going to be an obvious roll. I'm right there with you. So you all walk in, and um, obviously at the head of the table, you see a man wearing a very like, you know, well-placed crown more guards uh to his left there's a very like you know uh, well-kept woman also in this kind of like you know chest plate with chain mail and across from her is a huge beast of a man it's and, and, and he's not introduced quite yet but we're almost there so zach sorry for tracking my feet but a uh, quick little spiel for king oh perfect timing greetings and welcome do hope your trip from Shatar went all right. Please have a seat. There's much we need to discuss. Just sit next to the girl. Sit down. <laughs> of course. Always a flirt. <laughs> I'm gonna lean over to her and I'm be like, "Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm here because I'm special, after. apparently." That's good to know. I'm the king's guard. There's Aragon. Aragon's the king's guard. King? Where's my guard? Where's my? Check the newspaper. <laughs> One. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Aragon got lost in the castle. <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad the roll was. The roll was so bad that I was lost. All right. Now he's standing now on you're the table. Just standing on the table. <laughs> How is that? That, that blends right into the ground. It's... Oh, I'm going to sit by myself. Fuck this. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. <clears throat> Guard escorts Aragon in, and the king pretty much gets into it. To get to the point of things, sir. I have heard tell of your exploits, how you not only managed to establish a proper settlement, but also making such a, a positive impact your experience of much adversity in a short time came out on top for the most part. This is your best proof. And we were definitely a positive influence. So I have heard. Definitely. Now, I... Uh, I ask you all now to help me and the kingdom and perhaps even the world itself at large. Matter. You know, this is quite a, 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 a bad decision. Question. You see, uh, I've had my best working on understanding what has been happening in the world, and it seems that our world as we know it is 
well to put it as simply as I can, it has collided with a multitude of other realms. Massive mystical breaches or rifts caused our world to change because of this. Dangerous items or creatures that have once been thought to be mere legends are possibly popping up all over our world. And uh, he quickly goes into like a quick uh, account of a story, uh, the legend of Mitis, a, uh, a hero king who sought to create legendary suits and implements of armor to and boost his abilities so he could vanquish evil forever. And what he goes on to tell you is that uh, at some point, uh, Mythus then sought uh, to take down governments as seeing them as forms of corruption. And the idea was that uh, at some point when he declared himself as the one true king, he eventually, after years and years of extended life, saw that he was just horribly corrupted himself and one day just vanished allowing the world to get back to what it was. And Interesting. Only years after he vanished, mysterious temples that had popped up and then disappeared suddenly as well. This mysterious large stone temple. Ergon's very familiar with those. My experts tell me. Intimately you. familiar with those. That's, that's <laughs> very good. You must be a fan of the story. Now, my yeah. experts tell me the description of these temples and these stories. Mash than the ones that we've been finding popping up. I ask you all to go and investigate the temple we've had our eyes on in the Bittle Wood. This Goliath gentleman here, he has been sent from a town outside of the Bittle Wood, and we have asked him to aid you in your investigation. Good sir, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Zach. What was that? Thanks. Someone you cut out. Now. I'm oh, amazing. I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, uh, oh, this is Vanith Dawnbreaker Nalakavi. And uh, oh. I'm here to fuck. This guy's dramatic. I'm Vanith Dawnbreaker, last name, and I'm here to fuck. That's all we heard. I can't. Well, I can't. 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 As he well put it himself, he's here to fuck. And the king, the king <laughs> kind of turns from him. He's like, not sure how to take it. I, I guess that's how Goliath addressed. Perfectly alright. Um, now, I, I do not assume you all to do this task for free. I, 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 I've been seeking ways of giving you a proper payment, and as well as a, an estate within the city itself. That way... For each of us, or for the group as a whole? For the, for the group of you. We, the city is very massive, and finding open estates is, is rather difficult, but we, we have our eye on something. If this mission is fruitful... Why don't you just kick out the other people? Well, We're going to save their asses. You know, they should be thankful. Well, good sir, it's the fact that those people pay taxes. We, we need those. And, uh, what we're currently looking for is an establishment to set you up in. We do have something lined up, and uh, we'll get into it once you come back from your mission, hopefully successful. If that's if that is alright. Agreeable. Successfully mean not dead? Yes. If you could bring back any information, any, uh, any items, perhaps this temple truly does hold a titan of power of sorts. Be cool. Turn to the girl and I say, I have an item of power. Odd. You're a charmer, aren't you? <laughs> nice. I'm not lying. I do. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, that's right. You're the fucking good oh, You know, I could say it, but I don't think it would be true. <laughs> when the guard just kind of pipes up, like, I actually believe he has an item more than you do, oh boy. <laughs> So the, the king 
I just laugh. The king seeing that um that you guys are in this good spirit. Like, well, uh, if, if you are all more than happy to help, you are. We, we will find a place for you to stay the night here in the, uh, the castle, unless you, you see it fit. You'd like to get moving as soon as possible. In which case, we can arrange a, a nice thing. Assistance and travel. Big guy, how important is it that we get there soon? Very important. <laughs> oh, then we move. Very well. Guards, see these men to the, uh, or see this uh, group out to the front and get them to as, uh, as far out of the city as we possibly can get them and make sure they're pointed in the, in the right direction. And the guards will start to all stand up. But yes, sir. And, uh, I, uh, can I ask the king a quick question? Is have like a weaponsmith in the castle that makes rifles, but rifles by chance? Um, we, yes. we do have a few independent contracting blacksmiths within the city who have been dabbling with firearms, but for the most part, I, I try to keep the city free of such such weapons. But you are perfectly fine to have yours on you, good sir. But I I believe in strict policies on such matters. Fair enough. Well, Kingy, if I uh, if I'm gonna do this, I would like a rifle by the time I get back, please. I will look into getting you the two. Thanks. You can ask Captain whatever his face is. I I will be quite persistent on this. And do you have any owl folk here? Are you speaking of Arakoka, Kenku? Like we, I I don't know everybody in the city, but I I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one. All right, find that person for me too. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, good sir, I will have you know you're speaking to a king. Please, please address me respectfully. Yeah, this is respectful as I get. I, Sorry. It's quite troubling. But I'll let it slide. And uh, does anyone else want to try and have a conversation with the king? Um. I certainly don't. don't. I think enough is. I think a lot has been said, and uh, I think I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let him sit on it. All right. So, uh, <laughs> because I just realized I didn't spawn him in, uh, Aiden uh, then kind of stands up, and he kind of looks at the group and he says, "Y'all, I, I can't fucking do this." Yeah, your Your Majesty. Sorry for saying an obscenity in your presence, but I don't think. I want any part of this. Now, I, I hope that's all. <laughs> I always knew you were a win. Wow. Hey, look, I got... Fucking pussy. Look. That's... <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I'll admit it. Oh. It's fair. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I'm thinking that, uh, this life ain't just the kind of lifestyle for me. And Revan, or Aiden, then walks over to Revan. Takes the necklace off. Like, look, I don't know. And I figured if these things can help, they'd probably be best for you or anybody else in this group. But I, I don't think I'm going to need this for now. So he just pats you on Where the back. Where you going? Why don't you just kind of... Wait. Why don't you just chill with us, but you don't have to go on the missions? You can make us food. I mean, I... Be our servant. Well, I won't no. Do no service. You can do cool stuff. If you want, if you want me to be a cook, then fine. If Your Majesty, is that all right if I like just stay here and wait for you to get back in whatever establishment you set up for us to be a cook at? The king kind of looks at him. Oh yes, that's that's actually perfectly fine. The the place we were thinking of actually is indeed a, a tavern and inn. So a good cook is something that would be very very uh, advantageous for your work. In fact, I, I do ask. You willing uh, and eager to go, then make make haste. We'll, we'll, we'll be sure to send Mr. Aiden to the establishment when, when it is ready, and the, the uh, other owners will be there. So? Let's do it. Alright. Um, do you want to keep going? Because we've reached nine. We can go for like 10 more minutes probably. Alright, we can at least uh, get you guys plotted on the next map. 
And so, uh, all of you kind of head out, and um, I'll say this, as you head out, you notice that the, uh, the Venice, the wise gentleman with you, he is huge. Like, you all thought Aragon was a big guy. This guy is, like, he doesn't tower over Aragon, but he is definitely taller than Aragon, like, like by, a, by, a, by a substantial amount. Hell yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like Shaquille O'Neal and The Rock standing next to each other. They're both big guys, but one has clearly just got the height of the game. So, you all, uh, you all head out uh, with, uh, with, the, with the guards' assistance through the city and, you know, into the, into the wilds, and Vanith leading you back to the, uh, the town he was kind of just sent from randomly. Like, he, he didn't live in the town. He was just visiting and you were just sent there, or sent from there. So. But uh, you all make it to the town. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty scattered out kind of like farming community. Uh, they point you in the direction closer to the entrance to the Bitterwood where there's a, a small tavern and a few buildings clustered around it. And you all can kind of spawn all the way over here on the very, like, I guess, top okay. left. Uh, maybe? I don't think he can. It's not in the camera. There it is. Oh, yeah, there it never is. mind. I lied. Oh. It's boy. Alright, so, uh, you guys boy, are walking. It's, it's getting, you know, kind of, it's getting late. You guys were actually able to make really good time with the kind of the group direction. And, um, yeah, you're kind of on the, uh, not the outskirts of this town, but the outskirts of this part of the farming town. And, uh, yeah, what do you guys do from here? Do you head straight to the tavern? Because you've been told kind of like, there's only really one person who kind of frequents the Bitterwood. Uh, it's a small gnomish uh, person who kind of like lives near the entrance of the street. It's been a bit kind of... Get to meet another gnome. Guess we're good to just head to the tavern. Let's do it. First one, first person is uh, first person in to the establishment. You kind of go in. It's it's a fairly like you know humble looking place. Deer hung up on the wall, uh, decent bar, a few tables, a few people sitting at them. Uh, the what you could assume is like a, a loader folk standing behind the bar, a, kind of like a very you know sun tanned dwarf, next to a cat man, a small gnomish figure, and then like two women, just one older one, one younger. Themselves. Yeah, I wonder where Revan's gonna go. Oh man, that was a tough decision. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we got where Revan's going. Where do the rest of you guys turn to? I'm gonna go greet my fellow gnome. Oh, uh, I don't, I have a feeling they don't allow animals inside so i don't even think i can go in i mean there's a there's a spot for animals like you can hitch sab up if you have like some rope he's got like kind of like a little collar and just kind of pat him on the head being like i'll be right back all right you okay you just walk behind the bar right vanith do you Go I man the door. I man the door outside. I like it. I have no need for people or alcohol. Yeah. Oh, gonna right. fuck shit up if anything comes in or out. I like it. Right, so when Vanith just kind of like, you know, bouncy style posts up next to the door, arms crossed, kind of, you know, flexing a bit. He, 
big dude, but Aragon, you know, trudges past him, uh, kind of heads, I guess you're heading behind the bar to talk with the lizard folk. Yeah, sure. I didn't even realize they were lizard folk, but... <laughs> it's hard for me to zoom in on this. I gotta stay wide so I can see where everyone is, because my Trust thing me. never calibrates to where we want to be. Trust me, I know. I, I gotta, totally agree with that. I gotta make this for the stream and make sure people see everyone. Oh, he's, a, he's ugly as sin. My goodness. Wow, rude. I say that out loud to myself. <laughs> He looks at you and just takes back the yes. but he doesn't say anything either. He's like, Don't worry, I wasn't I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the one of the other guys in here. <laughs> so you did say it loud, okay. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> what is this guy, Clint Eastwood? <laughs> To get off your lawn next? <laughs> Look, just what, what? What do you want? What do you want? Why are you coming in here? Charging behind the bar? I don't want no trouble. Uh, am I not allowed to sit here? You're allowed to sit at the bar, but you're currently behind the bar. Like I'm, I'm working back here. You're not supposed to. God damn it! How am I supposed to know that? You can see where it I'm looks sitting. exactly the same. As there are chairs over on here. this side. Oh right. my god! He, he puts an open stool you know right here. There's an open stool. He's no, 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 no! I don't want to be anywhere near. near. Right, fine. Do you want anything to drink? Uh, what do you want? I'm just gonna go sit down. You're gone. I'm gonna go sit down Inside. next to Mina. Or okay. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a time out. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So Aragon uh, confusedly walks from behind the bar back to where Mina is. Uh, who wants to go next, Revan or Mina? Let's go to Revan. Okay. Which one's the old one? I'm guessing the one with the pink hair. Yes, the smaller, more diminutive. I uh, go over and I say, "What are uh, we're a bunch of uh, good-looking ladies like in a podunk town like this?" Oh, well, thank you. Um, we're just you know, we've been out here for a while. We've been just recently moved to the country. Uh, just figured I'd probably want to get my mom somewhere that's more stable. And the, the older woman kind of reaches across, like, "Yes, I know that. I like your hair." Um. No, if you want to get the get her somewhere safe, I, I I have a great place for her to go. There's this gigantic person outside who would totally <laughs> protect her for you, guaranteed. Like right now. I, I appreciate your offer, sir, but we we tend to you know do things ourselves. So I, as much as I do appreciate it, we only just finished moving in, and um, I I don't want to have her move. I agree months. with your mom. It's been boring as hell in this town. All we do is look at the woods and you see animals attack people. Oh, come on. Why are animals attacking people, Grandma? Right. Got some motherfucking issues. That's right, we do. <laughs> we most certainly do. Claude, what the hell? What is that? It's a, it's a dragonborn, Mom. If you think that thing's scary, go outside. <laughs> You just pan out the window, and Vanith is just doing push -ups. No, she looks out the window, and the first thing she sees is S.A.B. <laughs> oh, Lord, he has a child outside. And then she looks over and sees, sees a giant Goliath doing push-ups. Oh! Yeah, you should go talk to the Goliath. He's super kind. Super <laughs> talkative. If you didn't know. This is the most entertainment we've had in months. Mark, look, I'm working on it, okay? There's the, the big city we're trying to move to. I'm trying to make money here. How would you guys move? Well, uh, you know, especially for however long I'm in this town. You can move after that, though. Very funny. Um, I should... Okay, um, is there anything you and your friends would like to drink? I am technically working, but my mother just didn't talk to me. It's a 
Can I get you guys anything? Can I get anything for the, 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 the man outside or the... That's not his kid outside, is it? That's a dog? That's... Oh, can I get anything for Yeah, I heard that the man yes. outside... Yes. He is our dog. ...is attracted to older ladies. <laughs> I think if you said... trying real hard, dude. Mother outside... That would be a good <laughs> right now. I appreciate your offer, young man, but I don't think so. I knew the wife when I was younger. Let's just say they are not... Let's just say bedside manner is not so special. Mom, God, what... That's true. Sir. That... Sir. It's okay. It's okay. She's... She's fine. I mean, you know, the guy outside, he just, the first thing he told me was his bucks. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Why aren't you all just as, as uh, charming as ever? Is there something I can help you all with? Like, do you want any food or any drink? Like, are you looking for somebody? Because you all seem like you came here with a purpose. Like, we don't get too many, like, I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I recognize the big guy outside. He was here just like three days ago. Are you, like, friends of his? Are you looking for a friend of his? Uh, I'd honestly have to ask him. Not gonna lie. I totally forgot. Okay. I think we're here looking for somebody. Um, I, mean, I think I found that somebody, if you're interested, that you can continue talking to the pretty girl. Oh, yes, That's okay. Uh, it's okay. I'll come good. back and get a drink from her later. Let's say we let the conversation go on and have Nina do her interaction. Yep, let's do it. All right. So. Uh, okay. Nina, take it away. Okay. Hi. What's your name? <sighs> Nina, are you talking to me, kid? Ass. <laughs> I'm Scantel. Scantel Norhol. Pleasure to meet you. Fellow gnome, I see. I'm... Gnome? Yeah, I'm Mina. It's nice to meet you. I... Yes. What bring you here? Oh, um... Well, okay, so, like, crazy thing. Um, we're actually... We've been sent here by the king, and I'm pretty sure that we are supposed to come talk to you because of, like, strange things happening around here possibly but i kind of was only half listening to him all right i guess uh, his best and brightest and his uh, best and bright anymore yeah hey there's, hey. Uh, there's been a hey. slew of, uh, of that's me look honey look at my face do i look like i put up with people's shit oh no oh now i can see it yeah. um this gnome is scarred like haggard, battle worn, ah. old. Like he is just. Ah. He seen some things. I mean, you could. You you could still be nice. Granted. Much effort. Look, I. Sorry. I want to stand off with you. To answer your question. Is, there's been a there's been a string of a few interesting animal packs. Ones bigger than they normally are. About going to the woods, scout it out, see if there's any some sort of thing causing the pressure. You folks are here to investigate into that yourselves. Happy to help out. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, tell me, uh, are you willing to pay for services? Expecting charity. Um, I don't know if I have any money. Um, I, actually had I don't know down. if the king would pay you. You guys actually do have the. I, I probably have it in my orc pub. Well, I wrote like group inventory. Um, also, uh. a quick retcon: uh, when you got the rewards from the Grill Temple, it wasn't rubies the size of your palm; it was more onyx. So you got like small onyx gems the size of your palm. So with that, okay. the onyx gems between all of you, I think, would be worth two hundred and seventy gold.
I guess we could pay you, but I mean, we could probably take care of it if you just point us in the right direction. So. All right. I'm not sure what exactly is causing this. However, some of the more aggressive animals I've seen out there are coming from uh, this sort of part of the woods. And he does take out a little map. He's etched in a book. He's pointing to like kind of the middle of the forest. Where, for his knowledge, there's always been like this kind of open clearing, but he hasn't been able to get near it since. Like all these attacks started happening, he's, he's looked for like. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all the information I have. I don't want to give that away for free, at least. So you are uh, uh, him, huh? Just kind of uh, come save the day. Oh, Bieber originally um, just like sent off to an island. Um, and because we survived and somehow we're the most capable i know i know we don't look like it but we are somehow the most capable um the king was like hey yo uh come help us with some stuff and we we're like hey oh, uh oh. Honest, at least. I appreciate that. well if i can give you a little bit of more advice about the bitter wood keep your head on the swivel and if any of you ever try to go to sleep at sure one of you at least two of you will not a thing okay we can do that um, that's a goliath that was here thanks for your help oh yeah no problem make sure he doesn't what the, the goliath i was trying to correct you for make sure he doesn't uh, huh? do anything reckless out in the woods as dangerous as they are we don't really uh, have the environment get that but I don't know as like a two foot tall little gnome how much I can personally do but I'll pass along the information to somebody who can possibly do something. That's fair. I, If I may make a recommendation I recommend the large dragon man sitting next to you. Yeah uh, he's coming. my friend so yeah. Very well. so, um, Were you paying attention? Yeah I know. Okay, I'm like, yeah. in, uh, point of stuff. <laughs> okay, I won't point. So, you guys have your information. You guys uh, have a general area to start heading to. And you now have the uh, new companion of Vanith Dawnbreaker, I believe it's called, or most of the name is. Um, I think... <laughs> sorry, that, those are the important parts. I'm sorry, I gotta learn. I... For the long, I kept getting tripped on on Mina's name because it's Mina and Marie. So it's like, fuck. So, with that, <laughs> sorry about that. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, and with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and cut it off here. Uh, thank you uh, all who are watching now or on YouTube or whenever you get the chance to for coming by. Uh, Zach, thank you so much for joining. And again, sorry we took so long to get to your introduction. Um, <laughs> And, it uh, happens. Thanks. And uh, for the uh, Rob, Marie, and Braxton, thank you guys for coming back for season two. Super happy to be doing this stuff again. I'm super looking forward to what we got for next week uh, when the, the campaign really kicks off. And, um. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay, so thank you all for watching again. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Join us next week as the crew continue on their new journey. Be sure to watch the rest of the series on uh, Cast Iron Comics' YouTube channel. Thank you all for stopping by. Uh, unless any of you guys have anything else for us to say, I feel like this is a good stopping point. Good. All right, we'll see you next week. Time to fuck hey, shit everybody. up. everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> all right, goodbye. <laughs>